you know, when you go to some, you know, big player like Amazon with this concept, someone like Aparna who makes such variety of shows, what she's given us over the years is amazing. Are there some do's and don'ts? Like, you know, someone before Aparna told you to add some boys here, does Amazon or will also tell you what to do? Protocols you have to follow okay. uh, in any industry, with, especially with the show that we've made, which is about girls who are under 18. Okay. So those were the mandates that we were following. But okay. besides that, I think Amazon really enabled us and empowered us to make the show okay. that we wanted to make. Creatively, actually, Amazon, you know, this, I've done a bunch of work with them mm. before. Yeah. So we had Alankrita, who is uh, their creative, who was yeah. on our project. And okay. I think it was very, like, the script process was very, very good. Going through the casting process, tell me about that. It was the hardest casting to do because the girls were so bloody good. We were actually spoiled for choice. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we collectively all had our favorites, so there was a nice fight that was happening between all of us. If you literally go outside of the bubble that we are all in, mm. there is just way too much talent in the country. You know, and I have to talk about Pooja, but where did, where did that idea come from and what was her reaction? I've always loved her, means I grew yeah. up watching her films, you know. And she's perfect for the character. Yeah. She's just too good. Yeah, she's yeah. great for the character. Yeah. I mean, she's hard, yet she's complex, mm. yet she's, she's got she's this kindness. And yeah. So the, she, I mean, I didn't know her at all. Okay. And when uh, we found out, I was so excited. I mean, right. fantastic. Nitya Karanashi, thank you so much for your time and welcome to Bollywood Hangama. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. You know, this is a, uh, for me, this is a very exciting interview. I love interviewing makers, people who make the content that we watch, you know, and you all entertain us in the true sense. So firstly, thank you. <laughs> Keep doing that. Uh, I'll start with you. Uh, you know, this is a story that's so common. Like, you know, everybody's gone to boarding. Like every, if not, then your friend has gone, your cousin has gone. We all talk about it. But the thing is, in, he, we end up watching only things from the West. Why do not many people make this genre here, according to you? Concept? Honestly, I don't know. Because it is just such an... Uh, everybody is, is watching things like sex education or mm -hmm. never have I ever, ever whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. those titles yeah. that are there. Mm -hmm. And uh, off late, I found my niece saying something about that high school drama. But the thing is, the term high school is not even actually Indian. <laughs> right. In most Indian yeah. schools, you don't even have, have high, high school. school right. So I think it's just a, uh, it's, it's this genre that probably just got left behind. But I also feel, because if you want to do authentic casting, you mm. really have to pick the pick children. Mm -hmm. Who are probably not known actors. Okay, right. So what? So what happens is maybe mm -hmm. it's not that exciting for people as a project to put together. Mm -hmm. But I feel like the the just when you look at the uh, the use, mm -hmm. look at the numbers. Yeah. I am surprised more people are not making it. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I have always wanted to uh, tell this this particular story. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's only uh, now because I knew that I didn't want to make a film. I needed a lot more time to tell the story right. and lot many more characters. And so mm. a show just made sense. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think um, I think people people will now I because I am hearing young adult a lot yeah, yeah. suddenly. Yeah. Right. You know. I think also we've been a star-driven industry for a long yeah. time, True. and the advent of the Amazons and the Netflix have given such a amazing platform mm. to so much talent that we have for to mm. be able to come out. So right. I think that is also, that plays a, a factor in uh, genres changing now, right. for sure. Right. Right. Also 60% <coughs> of the population of our country is under 35, 35 right. and there isn't content for them, like mm. the young adult space mm. as much as there should be. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, the idea about a girls show there are so many of these boy-driven hostel dramas, but mm. there weren't too many girl mm. shows all yeah. about girls, girl yeah. schools. So I think that was also really exciting for us. Right. Yeah. You know, that has changed over a period of time. You know, we, when we were growing up, we saw Dil Chata and only three boys go to Goa. But now we, see, well, we do see girls of join. Course. Yeah. Of course. But you know, uh, the, 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 the truth is school. Yeah. See, school is very underrepresented in cinema. Yeah. Young girls, even in literature, you'll mm. see in Indian literature also, it's very underrepresented. Right. 
So I feel like that is, uh, I mean, it's too exciting for us. Yeah, that's what you all are changing, which is great. I think, you know, you, you have been attracted to very, um, not, not at all a completely out and out commercial, predictable cinema and entertainment. What is it that drives you to these kind of subjects? You know, I don't think one uh, actively decides that let me do mainstream <laughs> or let me do something that's not commercial. I, mm. I don't even, and we just, it literally comes from a place of one wants to tell those kind of stories, be authentic to the stories you're mm. trying to tell. Mm. And, and they sometimes happen to be called the non-commercial or non-mainstream. Mm. And, and, but I, I think over the last few years, that's also changing with, with, with the kind of content that's coming out. Right. Because now there is a thin line between, yes, you have your pot boilers and you have those big mainstream films mm. where you need a star because the math has to make sense. Mm. But then there are, um, I mean, 12th Fail is such a good yeah, example, right? True. So he yeah. made an authentic story, cast fearlessly and made a film mm. and and we all know what happened yeah, with the film yeah. so I think talking about mainstream or not mainstream is now like you mm. just have to tell a story that you want to tell and then fly with it right. and see what happens right yeah Karan you know on a uh, surrounded by women most of the time I can imagine <laughs> on the set and here <laughs> so what were, what was this vibe if you could explain to the viewers when y'all were filming this Extremely calm. Mm. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it was amazing. I was empowering for for a maker like myself to be surrounded by such creative people, such people with with unique voices. It mm. gave us an insight, gave me an insight into a lot of things that I really didn't pay attention to. I mean, women are a lot more detailed in their thought or, or precise in their world. Um, but we had, I mean, it was great. We had, uh, most of our HODs were women as well. Our production designer was a, um, was a girl called Tia Tejpal, who was amazing. Mm. Um, costume, makeup. Our writers. Our writers. writers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so I, I didn't really, I mean, it was not, it was not uh, problematic. Um, it was actually interesting to... Mm. Uh, right. To you know, part. you tell me, uh, when, you all, when you all thought of this particular story, one is this will also go a long way. Younger girls may watch this. Uh, you know, is there a sense of also, apart from entertainment, a bit of a responsibility, what to show, what not to show, uh, you know? No, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And the thing is, it's, um, you know, there are two things. One is that you, as a maker, you are in your 40s, I am at least. I'm in my 40s and, and I want to be authentic to this world of 17 year olds, Okay. right? And so you have to really put your kind of 40 year old brain aside right. and be like, what are they sensitive are they to? Doing? Because we've grown up and we have become hardened with mm. life. Mm. And so you have to be really, really mindful, mindful of how we, we engage those stories. Because what, what you feel so, I don't know, you know, so kind of cut up about when you're young, mm. When you're much older, you're like, what was I crying about? Or what was that about? Or what was this about? Yeah. And so you ha it's a very, it, it's, it's quite hard, I have to say. I thought this one I'll do in my sleep, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But it was really hard because you, you have to really try and be true to that age group and try and understand that, no, that means a lot. Mm. And there is a responsibility, mm. you know. Uh, also, now, we're extremely mindful with language and with mm. with yeah. dealing with certain subject matter we were very we wanted to deal with it sensitively we didn't okay. want to we didn't want to approach things uh, we approach things very subtly mm. uh, we approach subjects uh, extremely subtly right also uh, it, 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 I, initially the show was called masum because there was we wanted to actually engage in the the innocence of this age group really and i feel like a lot of young adult stuff that we've been watching from around the world mm. is quite dark Mm. And it's yeah, quite intense. Right. Yeah. And uh, even even in India, I feel like it's always about... So we really wanted to... Like, this is really a kiss for little women. Mm -hmm. I really yeah. do believe that it, that's what we attempted. Yeah, right. because your first heartbreak, your first yeah. fight with your best friend, all of those things may not feel like a big deal, like she said today. Mm. But at that time, that it's your life falls apart. Yeah, right. So... <laughs> Right. Yeah. You know what is? Uh, if I ask you, when you when you when you all were making this, when you talk to the younger people for research and things like that, what is different today and what is still the same? And when now. we were um, yeah. in oh. school, right. 
to what has changed yeah. like what they talk about what I is feel, issues I feel for like them they're just smarter yeah. smarter they're, just, they're, they're more aware they're, so they're smarter we were we were like the yeah i mean social media changed the world, the world yeah right. there's so much more information there's so much more sense so they know a lot more yeah they're also no, they're, they're, they're smarter they're, they're, the emotional quotient is a lot higher than where we were. Yeah, uh, absolutely. They oscillate way more than we uh, ever did. Mm -hmm. uh, you're high, then you're low, then you're high, then you're low. Yeah. Uh, I much, found that. Yeah, and very much in, in, in tune with yeah. themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, because we also did this big casting process. So we, we engaged yeah. with a lot of girls. But I also feel that we didn't go through as much insecurity as probably they are yeah. going now with the whole social media. Like, at the time we were in school, you could go for a holiday and look like and have fun. And have fun yeah. today. Going for a holiday, like you went for a holiday and you came okay. back and told your friends how was your holiday. Right. Today everybody knows how your holiday went because of right. social media. Right. So they have to look a particular way. They they mm. all look great mm. at seventeen. I don't think yeah. we looked anything like this <laughs> when we were seventeen. You know, so there are pros and right. Yeah. You know, I do have a bone to pick with a lot of people. <laughs> In Sorry. 40s and post 40s, who this right of the millennials and the Gen Z, they they always say they don't know anything. You know, they are very um, you know they are not attached to things. They're, so, but that's not true, right? That's not, not at all true. I'll just give you this example of the girls that are in the show, right. and a lot of them, it's their first time in front facing a camera, okay. and just in terms of tapping into them as artists okay. or them tapping into their emotional emotions to be mm. able to i it, it it has been a privilege to work with this generation wow that's so nice to absolutely hear. they are uh, they are so extremely sensitive and oh, in tune hungry, with also humble. who they are yeah. you know who they are and the thing is they are very they're not boxed in mm. you are not they, they're not, they're not like, oh, this is, the, the, the term artist is much broader. Okay. I'm not only going to do film, but I can paint jeans as well, and I can do this as well, and I can, mm. and it's, it's absolutely fascinating to me, actually. Right. They're more aware of everything, like, mm. even health. Mm. When we <laughs> were 17, we were eating, like, <laughs> like it was yeah. garbage situation. Yeah, I remember yeah. in school, it would be like just throw anything at us, we would eat it. <laughs> right. But today everybody's like, don't eat this. I want right. to look, taking care of their health, fitness. Right. They're just more aware of everything at such a young age. That is amazing. Which is right. great. Yeah. Right. You know, uh, going through the casting process, tell me about that. You know, because uh, we will come to the girls who are in the show. What did you observe of those hundreds of people you all met who didn't get the cut and you, who you thought had the potential and the fire and things like that? What all did you observe? Well, you know, honestly, it, the casting process is amazing, uh, and I have to give credit to our showrunner Sudhan Shu right. and uh, casting Sh directors uh, Romil and Shivam, yeah. uh, our two casting directors, because we really spread it. You know, boarding school is very diverse. You okay. have people, at least in all our girl boarding schools, we had girls from all over India. Hmm. So the idea was really that we just kept telling them we don't want kids that are in Bombay. Right. We want you to. You know, whatever budgets there are, whether it's going to Nepal to get on uh, the Nepalese girl, whether it's, you know, go. so we, we really spread ourselves. Okay. And I think the one common thing I, that I, at least was just confidence. I have not seen, I barely saw, you know, otherwise you have to, with so many auditions coming mm. in, you have like, you have rounds and rounds and yeah, rounds yeah. and rounds. Mm. It was the hardest casting to do because the girls were so bloody good. What was your brief? What did you want? What did you tell your I wanted like authenticity. Right. I wanted to actually see what, in fact, for me, the lines were just by the by. Hmm. I just wanted to see what you have. So hmm. we actually didn't give them the lines. We gave them okay. who you are, wh what do you do, what are your interests. Okay. So they were, the monologue was very long. <laughs> um, because we just wanted to pick, I think, and diversity. Uh, right, di yeah. different. And, yeah. and and we just wanted to pick actual characters. Right. What's out for you, Karan? When you saw the casting from different coming from different different places, what did you observe? Um, <clears throat> we were actually spoiled for choice. Yeah. I can and uh, you know, we collectively all had our favorites. So there was a nice <laughs> fight that was happening between yeah. all of us yeah. about yeah. about the kind of kind of girls that we perceived those characters to be. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, for me it was, uh, 
I mean, we had an entire wall full of these young girls uh, that we were that mm. we had to choose from. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So for me, uh, as a maker, to have uh, that much variety and choice to to decide, mm. luxury. Right. There's just so much talent out there, mm. yeah. like that needs to break in, or people need to give more opportunities to do because. If you literally go outside of the bubble that we are all in, mm. there is just way too much yeah. talent in of the country. Too much talent. Yeah. Coming to the show, uh, start with by telling us what's happening here. Of course, these are girls, and one, uh, you know, they are. They are. Uh, we saw the trailer. These, yes. This audience has seen the trailer. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little more what's happening here. What to expect? What is happening? What is happening is that the, they, <laughs> these girls are obviously at a very, very vulnerable age. This is when everyone's dealing with identity crisis, mm. according to me. This is when we actually start questioning identity, be it, be it whatever, sexual identity, be it your body identity, be it your religious identity, mm. any of those, mm -hmm. right? Like, and, and I think that what we try to do is we've just let a bunch of very, very, um, strong-willed characters mm. loose into a gang of girls <laughs> uh, to grapple with that, right. to grapple with identity. Mm. And, and uh, along the way, obviously, there is some, you know, the attempt is not to be preachy. Okay. Don't want that 40-year-old right. brain coming in. Right. Don't want that. Okay. Uh, but just have, uh, also just enjoy school life. Mm. It's never coming back. Right. And so just glimpses of, of, um, of love, of heartbreak, of friendship, sisterhood, fights, all that, uh, at least I miss. Nice. Now. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> you know, what all, what all have you all taken from your experiences? Like, you know, things like, you know, say one boy coming into a girl's college, only brothers are allowed, yeah. so that one boy will come and then, then obviously the attention. Yeah. yeah. What all experiences are from? You Real know, there life. are so many because I spent nine years in a boarding school. Wow, okay. There are just so many good and bad um, experiences that mm -hmm. one goes through. But, you know, um, just to pick some is very hard. But okay. just the, like, you know, like people say, are you living under a rock today? <laughs> right. You were actually living under a rock. Like, you, we were on one hill for nine years. That's your world. Wow. Yeah. Those are your people. Um, your life falls apart if your best friend doesn't talk to you for a week or if you get caught doing something that something mm. as trivial as just um, eating a pizza while you're not supposed to eat it. Right. It just is so huge. Yeah. But in hindsight, today when you think about it and, and I remember being in boarding school and you know, like Karan was saying yesterday, you just, you're like, okay, when is this going to get over and when am I going to go out in the real world? Mm. And now that we are in the real world, you're like, that was like the best time of my life and why was I in a hurry to get out? Right. So the idea is to just enjoy where you are, enjoy school because it's truly the most precious time that you're going to have in your life. Right. You, know? you know, I do feel that, you know, um, I wish systems were different, teachers were easier, things like that. I wish I had it slightly more easy and typical boys school, you don't get whacked just for everything. Uh, what all do you all think from your experiences, at, you know, studying and now making <clears> this, we need to change as a system and make it easy for the youngsters. I mean, for when we were growing up, it was a part and parcel of the entire learning process. Yeah. So we didn't really judge it that much. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was ragging. There was, there was a yeah. whole host of things that happened to all of us. Mm -hmm. And I think we were, I, I'm not propagating for it. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely think um, the educational systems in our country need to change a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think they need to focus less on academics actually. Yeah. I think there needs to be a holistic approach to education. Right. We need to be more in touch with the environment which we're completely mm. disassociated with. Mm. We need to learn about taxes, we yeah. need to learn about life like, skills like life that, skills yeah. Like yeah. that, that yeah. we don't really know yeah. about and are not taught. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, like I'd definitely like to send my kid for one summer program to just work under a chartered accountant and understand, understand how it really works. It Absolutely, yeah. You know, the taxes. The Suddenly one day you're thrown into thrown all into this. Thrown into like yeah, TDS yeah. and GST and you have no idea yeah. because you're not taught about all Correct. of this in no, school. Right. right. So, yeah. Yeah, what do you think we should yeah. I mean, I think there's, I think it's a bit of both. I think that there's lots to, lots to keep also. Yeah, okay. I do, I do feel that. I, I think we grew up, I, I think our teachers were way too harsh yeah. on us and True. I think I think there was space, at least in boarding schools, for only survival of the fittest. Yeah. So if mm. you didn't, if you didn't have the, 
If you didn't cut it. If you didn't cut it, it was mm. it was very hard right. for children. Mm. Just crying in the dormitories was very hard. Mm. And I feel like I feel like that, you know, like get up and just go with it and not understanding what the, the you know, it, every child is not the same. Yeah. I think that is something I would definitely change. Right. Uh, but and there's, yeah, but there's a lot. I feel like the kind of respect that we give education, teachers, our uniform, our books, I love all that. That's missing, you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that's Absolutely. Missing. Absolutely. A lot of old school yeah. culture. I mean, there was like a thin line between this new IB culture and mm. the old school mm -hmm. that we all went to. Mm. And one needs to just find that balance and then we are good. Yeah, like. Yeah, but we are the like last people to teach about education. Let me just make that clear. No, but like screen culture. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should not, children should not be allowed phones or access to social right. media if it were up to me. Right. Uh, or the internet. Right. Yeah, but we have a four-year-old and he is, is, Same. is, My is, kid is, is, watch, is swiping. watching stuff. Right. Watching stuff, yeah. Right. You know, that's, that's a good question to ask all of you all. Um, every parent goes through this. At oh. what age do you give a mobile phone to a Oof. child? It is a question. And, it's, and like you're saying, you know, y'all are not the right people. I feel y'all are the right people. We have to go and ask normal people like y'all and not just some people sitting in a room making all the rules and laws. So you tell us, is the, it's, it's different for everyone or what is it? So uh, we it, have is, it is different for everyone. Right. Unfortunately, when my son was two, we were in the middle of a pandemic and oh. there was COVID. And at that point, you're like with your child for 12 hours and then as parents, you give in because you want that one hour of peace and you're like, okay, what do you need to watch, watch. So right. it's on us as well Correct. because we give in to sure. it. But when will you give Sahir his own phone? No. <laughs> right. That, that I don't know. How old know. is he? He's five. Okay. Yeah. And he doesn't have his own phone. No, no, obviously no. not. No. No. Not no. for Just the near future. Not Just for the checking. near future, no. <laughs> No, we, we, are, we have a four-year-old and, okay. and I'm thinking if I can help it, this is me yeah. right now, Your if wish. I can help it, not happening before 16. Before, oh, no, that's, okay. not, that's not even we'll going to happen. His own phone. Yeah, no, yeah. that's not going to happen. We'll keep this interview and show it to him. Yeah, He'll be watching this interview in some guys. Guys more than No, guys, <laughs> come on. It's not going to No? No, no, no. It's impossible. Impossible. But, but, but no, you know, also one because interesting thing about, also about doing the show in boarding school is because we, we based it on a few of the girl boarding schools. Okay. Yeah. But actually, they're still not allowed mobile phones. Okay. At yeah, what you, age is that? Till you're in <laughs> school. Till, you're till the 12th grade. Okay, just not so you get, you get phone calls from your parents on a landline and you go and talk to them, which to city kids, it's like unheard of, right? Because they're so connected. No, that sounds very interesting, yeah. but do you think when they come to the real world, they'll be slightly cut off? Yeah, probably. What, but no, what, what, what is the real, like what is the real world real offering world anyway? This, yeah. <laughs> but that's the, the minute thing. they come out, they're all given their phones and da 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 But they'll know different things, right? The, these city kids know about like cars and brands. Those, yeah. those kids probably know more about animals and plants right. and nature. So right. it's... And so they come in here and then they discover all of this. True, true. What a yeah. trap it is. That's why I keep digressing, coming, coming back to your show. But it's such an interesting topic. You know, so tell me, when, when these girls came on the set, now it's great, Nitya, for them to, that you are making something with them. You know, they must have seen your work before. Um, what, what, do you, what do they tell you? Today also it's a phase where you all are going for a screening. It's a bit of a get together. where you're, Yes, like, absolutely. Tell me, what, you know, what do you want to tell these girls and also other girls who, you know, who are watching this, who want to do this? I mean, I think I think a lot that I want to say, uh, and we have we have spoken about this before when we were just writing. I think okay. a lot that we want to say about the show is actually in the show. Right, in the and we want them to watch. And honestly, it. it's really about identity because right. I feel in this digital world that we are talking about, mm. right? Whether you want to be a, whether you're a content, everybody first of all is a content creator, yeah. right? All these girls, my God, it's okay. just uh, it's crazy, like how. <laughs> they have so much to talk about and they have so many things to post and stuff like that and I feel like I feel like in this ever-growing kind of digital world I think the only thing with the thing of AI and all the only thing that is probably going to uh, separate you is your identity right, right? of who you are so true, yeah. and I feel like that's all that one <laughs> needs to hone and I mm. think that doesn't stop when you're kids I think mm. all of us we're yeah. just constantly trying yeah. to brush on that on mm. what we and so for me that's really the I mean that's what I want to tell the girls because mm. you know it really this is such a precarious age it is about finding the correct women to surround you 
it really holds you in good stead when you mm. grow up. Mm. And I think, I think find that sisterhood, find, keep working on that identity, and I think the show is a little bit about that. Right. What, do you, what would you both like to tell them? I tell them to <clears throat> keep chasing what, the, what deeply makes them tick, mm. um, to keep believing, mm. uh, to never give up on what you're doing and what you believe in. Mm. And eventually, you will become what you, what you will find that dream or you'll, you'll, you'll achieve that dream that you're mm. looking at achieving. I think a lot of people give up on their dreams. I think we stop living for that and that would be my uh, message. Nice. Actually, you know, you also someone, I've always looked up to you. You Like, we were talking about people being cut off and living in isolation. You were that girl at one point of time and today look at where you are. You know, you make content and you produce films and shows. What would you like to tell them? Um, I'd like to say that don't let anyone tell you what you can or can't do. Okay. Because if you think you have it in you and mm. you think you are capable of something, just mm. Put your head down and just go do your work mm. and then let your work do the talking. Right. That's right. all. You know, if I may, uh, uh, young makers like you all, if I may call you young makers. They are. <laughs> no, yeah. Right. Right. You know, so, uh, you know, you all, are, you all are the generation that's giving a lot of respect to writers. You tell me your process of making this and what was, who, where did this story come from? What was your brief to the writers? What did they give you? Who all are the writers? Please name, uh, name so, them. So for me, uh, we, when I uh, thought of uh, uh, the idea, the first thing we did was I just went to Amazon and I was like, listen. And I spoke to Aparna and, and okay. she was like, oh my god, we have to tell the story about girls. Yeah. Um, and before that, I'll tell you that I was told um, by a few people that I was talking to that, listen, you should add some boys in, huh? It's not going to work. <laughs> really? Yeah. So anyway, so to kudos, to, yeah. kudos to, to Aparna. Uh, and immediately, when, once that happened, I actually spoke to Sudhanshu, okay. who is also the showrunner, and to also helm the writer's room. Okay. So we had Sunena Kumari, who is a wonderful writer, for, and she's all, all our writer's room was boarding school girls. Okay. And, and directors. And, yeah, and, 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 and all of us. Yeah. Advitya, uh, who is this lovely new writer that, that is going to be unleashed onto the world. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. And Radhika Malhotra okay. and Sudhanshu Saraya. So we were four writers. Okay. Um, and I think the idea, I, I knew the characters, honestly. Like mm. I knew... Like, I think I knew eight girls. Okay. Then we had to get rid of one. So then it became seven. Mm. And then, so we knew the characters. We knew, all, all we said was we wanted individual themes. And, and um, I think once we got into a room, we just said, like, let's tap into our memories. Okay. So we'll work with nostalgia, but we can't just make it about that. Because mm. it has to be contemporary. Right. And I think right. that those That's were the few a... guidelines mm. that we had. Mm. And I remember once we had eight characters, we were like, okay. And then there was this one, one place that we reached in the room where it was like, but what is the theme of the show? Mm. And then we were talking to Karan, and we, I think we were all on a call with Amazon. They were like, yeah, let's just find that. You know, everyone wants that through line. Right. And that's when we came up with, and Karan will tell you what that was. Yeah, please. No, I mean, uh, um, the tr through line for the show is to know thyself. Yeah, it's no and, and it's each character who comes into this story far away from who they are and go closer towards who they are. Right. So it is you just coming towards your true self. And I think that was the theme that we were grappling to, to roll the entire story around. Okay. And we had this writer's room and we jammed and jammed and jammed and then mm. gave themes to each character and then, um, yeah. and then went through the process of Right. It. You know, when you go to some, you know, big player like Amazon with this concept, are there some do's and don'ts like someone like Aparna who makes such variety of shows, what she's given us over the years is amazing. Uh, are there some do's and don'ts like, you know, someone before Aparna told you to add some boys here. Does Amazon or will also tell you what to do? So, so there are protocols you have to follow. Okay. Uh, in any industry with especially with the show that we've made which is about girls who are under 18 okay. so those were the mandates that we were following but okay. besides that i think amazon really enabled us and empowered us to make the show okay. that we wanted to make yeah i think they i creatively actually amazon you know this I, i've done a bunch of work with them mm. before yeah. so we had alankrita who is uh, their creative who yeah. was on our project and okay. i think it was very like the script process was very, very good. 
It was very, very good. It is, it is very, very creator-driven, and 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 they they are very invested. Mm. And the, it's not you would you don't just get like pointers saying, you know, this is not working. There's always an interesting. You'll mm. get interesting ideas from them as well. Mm. But yes, there. There is a lot of restriction when you come to the Sage Group, wow. and that is not just with Amazon. That's that is just that's overall, general overall yeah. industry. So you got to roll with that. Yeah. You know, there's right. a full-on yeah. guideline that's that you have and to follow. I think you're taking from the writing process. Mm. The idea is we know that boarding school kids will get into it. They'll mm. get the show, mm. but the curiosity when people ask you, oh, "How was boarding school life?" Like people who want to know about. Mm. The boarding school life. Yeah. I think that those are the people that we really hope should also watch our well, show right. because it's not just we've right. tried to be as authentic and as uh, real with the with with showing the boarding school culture mm. through our show. So, yeah. Right. You know, y'all also um, y'all have made them meet. They have come from different worlds. They are now friends. I believe they are yes. they are yeah. thick and uh, they are close. And yeah. you know, y'all have a hoarding. And you said they were all below hoarding, watching themselves. <laughs> they are magazine covers. They are doing interviews. Um, Y'all, you know, this is a great job that y'all have done. Y'all have put people together. Uh, do you see them going a long way? Do you, do you all observe that? Yeah, yeah. I, I think they're going to shine. Yeah. All seven of them, and there are so many other people in the show. They are all fantastic. That's yeah. also the nature of film, though. Right. Film is not about film. It's about the people. Mm. We all, we all become a tribe, and you all, you have such intense relationships that are, mm. that are formed over. A limited amount of time, hmm. and um, that's the nature of that. Yeah, we're yeah. So they, they, yeah, like Pooja calls it, gypsy families. You're like <laughs> gypsy families that come together and then you just disperse. Right. But these girls means I was so worried. I, honestly, that how do you show a friendship? Like you first, they've just met. You right. have to show a friendship that's been lasted eight years. Mm. How do you bring that on to, on, on screen? Mm -hmm. And we literally put them in a room together. And I remember there was Pooja, Swaroop, and uh, and Sheena, and they came and they called me. They met them for. Three hours. Them. Yeah, they right. were they were workshopping okay. them for a week, and they called me after the first day they met them. They they like Nitya, you have nothing to worry about. Wow. Because these That's girls sad. are getting on like a house on fire <laughs> until date. Yeah. But I do feel I've i uh, I mean I'm biased. I think yeah. they're supremely talented. I think they're <laughs> going to go a very very long way. Right. Uh, they're smart. They're much smarter than no, any I think of people us. People appreciate the performances. <laughs> right. Yeah. Are yeah. They're good. Nice. You know, and I have to talk about Pooja, but where did where did that idea come from, and what <laughs> was her reaction? You know, what was the big learning? We've all grown up, and you know, Pooja was exactly this girl when she was younger. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Uh, so Sudanshu had done a film called Sana with yes. her, and uh, my first film ever. Everybody says I'm fine. That I was a third AD on. It was oh, Rahul okay. Bose's film. Was okay. her last film. Oh my God. So. Wow. We, wow I know that. Yeah. So uh, when her name came out, I was like, listen, she's back, <laughs> and I've always loved her. Means I grew yeah. up watching her films, you know. Yeah. And she's perfect for the character. Yeah. She's just too good. Yeah, yeah, she's great for the character. Yeah. I mean, she's hard yet she's complex mm. yet she's she's got she's this kindness. And yeah. So the she. I mean, I didn't know her at all. Okay. And when. Uh, we found out. I was so excited. I mean, right. fantastic. And and she's she's just and you're right. She's always on the other. I, mean, I can imagine her in school. <laughs> My God. With that yeah, mouth, absolutely. there's no way she she's definitely <laughs> sitting on the other side of the table. Yeah. You know. That so, is true. So it's so nice to do that. Right. Yeah. Right. I have some fun questions for you all. But before that, do you want to tell people where to watch this? When is this out? How many episodes? Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. We've got seven episodes come, dropping on Amazon Prime tomorrow, 14th March. I don't know when this is going to air, but 14th mm. March, yes. Amazon Prime, seven mm. episodes. Please binge watch all of them with your gang. Yeah, that's what. With your girl gang, with your boy with your gang. boy gang, with 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 people that you love. Just watch our show. And your parents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or don't not your parents. Yeah. Don't leave anyone. Right. Absolutely.